So I just recently found out the poetry has been cheating on me. And at first I was shocked, my anger swelled. Then my temperature dropped as my heart fell into a pot of boiling pity where pain compelled me to make love to hate and heartbreak was hell. It was hell. Sorrow punched and blinded me. My back up third eye back down from the beef. And the fact that poetry was unfaithful kept me in a narcotic state of disbelief. All I kept asking myself was why me? After all this time I loved her. How could she? She'd been cheating like the cheaters on my 42 inch screen TV show in the biography of Casanova's life in the bureaucracy while engaging women in adultery. I caught poetry on top of psychology. Fornicating with religion and philosophy. Sandwiched between music and history. And as I ate a sandwich, I used the music, the music upon poetry in my history. You see, she's been giving herself away like philanthropy to the masses in the classes in the school of thought, where the forces of good and evil fought for control. She was my very heart and soul, R&B, jazz, and blues in one whole. She gave me the tools to carve a life out of patience and persistence, carve a life out of love, and the skill to twist words until my twisted words were completely free of verbs, and I had to rearrange the alphabet to find new words. You see, poetry has been good to me thus far, and I still somehow want to accommodate her, because nobody dries my tears quite like her. She taught me how to Bleed through the pen, transform my anger into lines of hope on paper. She's been good to me, really good, but of course not as good as she was to the greats like Whitman, Neruda, Kipling, Milton, Byron, or Robert Frost. Oh my God, poetry's been cheating on me. I found a cell in her body in the spoken word scene where poets would taste her. This bit of rock, like the deepest clean of Listerine. She was washing the dirt from the mouth of most rappers who add nothing to their society. I was so distraught that she couldn't just be mine before Ben Jerome, I mean Gemini, hit me with his classic poem, Poetic Bloodlines. And when I woke from my trance, I realized the poetry was a gift to all mankind. You see, I love her, and I know she loves me back. She's my weapon, my number one plan of attack, feeding me a verbal dosage of linguistic crack, which I inhale until my nostrils turn black to help me compose in a life full of woe. 365 days full of prose, 52 weeks of my potency grows. She kisses my vocal cords and gives me reach. So without her, seven days at a time, I am weak. Without her, my hours and months don't exist. She loves me, she loves me not. My Negro peach, I want to caress the nouns, singing in plural vowels or consonants and all the other parts of her speech. I want to make love to her every Rhyme so explicitly that our flow becomes a crime, and I want to touch her similes in inappropriate ways. Have her metaphors rearrange large amounts of space in my brain, changing the frequency of my brain waves. And I want to be random, and I want to be abstract, and I want to tell her that if her ass is anything like my addiction to her, well, that must mean she got like the biggest, fattest booty ever. You see, I love her. I want her to always be mine because when she's by my side, I know I'm alright. Life's worries may keep me up at night, but nothing compares to the emptiness I feel when I cannot write. Poetry. So I just recently found out the poetry has been cheating on me, and there is nothing I can do but accept it, and there is nothing I can do but embrace it, and there is nothing I can do but tell her I love her too. So I picked up the phone, changed my mind, put down the phone, picked up my coat, walked to the lobby, and I checked out of the Heartbreak Hotel. Because the way I see it, for my poetry to take me to heaven, well, we must first keep going through hell, but I can just see it now, the two of us, in a menage to our success, as we bid failure goodbye, adios and farewell.